November 30th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hosea chapters 1 through 3 of the Old Testament. This is the word of the Lord, which was revealed to Hosea, son of Beeri, during the time when Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah ruled Judah, and during the time when Jeroboam, son of Joash, ruled Israel. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, he said to him, Go marry a prostitute who will bear illegitimate children conceived through prostitution, because the nation continually commits spiritual prostitution by turning away from the Lord. So Hosea married Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim. Then she conceived and gave birth to a son for him. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Name him Jezreel because in a little while I will punish the dynasty of Jehu on account of the bloodshed in the valley of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. At that time, I will destroy the military power of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her no pity, Lo Ruhema because I will no longer have pity on the nation of Israel, for I will certainly not forgive their guilt. But I will have pity on the nation of Judah. I will deliver them by the Lord their God. I will not deliver them by the warrior's bow, by sword, by military victory, by chariot horses, or by chariots. When she had weaned no pity, lo, Ruhema, she conceived again and gave birth to another son. Then the Lord said, Name him, not my people. Lo, am I, because you are not my people, and I am not your God. However, in the future, the number of the people of Israel will be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. Although it was said to them, You are not my people, it will be said to them, You are children of the living God. Then the people of Judah and the people of Israel will be gathered together, They will appoint for themselves one leader and will flourish in the land. Certainly the day of Jezreel will be great. Then you will call your brother my people, am I. You will call your sister pity, Ruhema. Plead earnestly with your mother, for she is not my wife and I am not her husband, so that she might put an end to her adulterous lifestyle and turn away from her sexually immoral behavior. Otherwise, I will strip her naked and expose her like she was when she was born. I will turn her land into wilderness and make her country a parched land, so that I might kill her with thirst. I will have no pity on her children, because they are children conceived in adultery. For their mother has committed adultery. She who conceived them has acted shamefully. For she said, I will seek out my lovers. They are the ones who give me my bread and my water, my wool, my flax, my olive oil, and my wine. Therefore, I will soon fence her in with thorns. I will wall her in so that she cannot find her way. Then she will pursue her lovers, but she will not catch them. She will seek them, but she will not find them. Then she will say, I will go back to my husband because I was better off then than I am now. Yet until now she has refused to acknowledge that I was the one who gave her the grain, the new wine, and the olive oil, and that it was I who lavished on her the silver and gold which they used in worshipping Baal. Therefore I will take back my grain during the harvest time and my new wine when it ripens. I will take away my wool and my flax which I had provided in order to clothe her. Soon I will expose her lewd nakedness in front of her lovers, and no one will be able to rescue her from me. I will put an end to all her celebration, her annual religious festivals, monthly noon celebrations, and weekly Sabbath festivities, all her appointed festivals. I will destroy her vines and fig trees, about which she said, These are my wages for prostitution that my lovers gave to me. I will turn her cultivated vines and fig trees into an uncultivated thicket so that wild animals will devour them. I will punish her for the festival days when she burned incense to the Baal idols. She adorned herself with earrings and jewelry and went after her lovers, but she forgot me, says the Lord. However, in the future I will allure her. I will lead her back into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. 
From there I will give back her vineyards to her, and turn the valley of trouble into an opportunity for hope. There she will sing as she did when she was young, when she came up from the land of Egypt. At that time, declares the Lord, you will call my husband. You will never again call me my master. For I will remove the names of the Baal idols from your lips, so that you will never again utter their names. At that time, I will make a covenant for them with the wild animals, the birds of the air, and the creatures that crawl on the ground. I will abolish the warrior's bow and sword, that is, every weapon of warfare from the land, and I will allow them to live securely. I will commit myself to you forever. I will commit myself to you in righteousness and justice, in steadfast love and tender compassion. I will commit myself to you in faithfulness, then you will acknowledge the Lord. At that time I will willingly respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the sky, and the sky will respond to the ground. Then the ground will respond to the grain, the new wine, and the olive oil. And they will respond to God plants, Jezreel. Then I will plant her as my own in the land. I will have pity on no pity, lo Ruhema. And I will say to not my people, Lo am I, you are my people, and he will say, You are my God. The Lord said to me, Go show love to your wife again, even though she loves another man and continually commits adultery. Likewise, the Lord loves the Israelites, although they turn to other gods and love to offer raisin cakes to idols. So I paid fifteen shekels of silver and about seven bushels of barley to purchase her. Then I told her, you must live with me many days. You must not commit adultery or have sexual intercourse with another man. And I also will wait for you. For the Israelites must live many days without a king or prince, without a sacrifice or sacred fertility pillar, without ephod or idols. Afterward, the Israelites will turn and seek the Lord their God and their Davidic king. Then they will submit to the Lord in fear and receive his blessings in the future. God, I've always read Hosea with this like amazing framework of Israel in you, of Hosea and his wife and how she uh, started to stray in, in a marriage that started out good, just like your relationship with Israel started out good and then they strayed and, and they went and started worshiping idols of their neighboring communities, uh, including Baal, who was one of the most horrid idols that they could worship because it included child sacrifice and a lot of sexual acts in the temple um, with the mindset that the sexual acts in the temple with the cult prostitutes, uh, that fertility in the temple would get the idols, the gods, the deities to create fertility in their, in their crops at the time. So it's always been uh, this very apparent and easy to follow story of the parallels between you and Israel and this prophet Hosea and uh, you asking him to take this wife Gomer who then goes on to cheat on him and, and what does that relationship look like and that reconciliation that happens. However, this time when I read it, it just meant so such a different thing to me than usual uh, around uh, chapter 2 verse 5 where it's talking about that she's going to go out and seek her lovers uh, because they are the ones who gave her her food her clothing um, all of her luxuries and her husband Hosea says no <laughs> I'm going to fence you in so you can't commit any of these adulteries uh, outside of the marriage so, so you can't seek those other people uh, you can't pursue those other people and she said okay fine then I'm gonna go back to you my husband and then Hosea talks about how with hurt in his voice how she refused to acknowledge that he was the one who gave her food he was the one who gave her clothing he was the one who gave her luxurious items not these these idols and lovers and uh, different arenas in her life that she sought. In reading this, it broke my heart. In fact, 
I had to stop recording because I could tell my voice was starting to catch. That, that was me. So clearly, that was me before you came into my life and gave me a new heart. All of the incredible things that you gave me, my talents in life, my money in life, all the luxury items I had in my life, all those things that you gave me, I use them for me. I use them for selfish gain. I didn't acknowledge that they came from you. There was no thankfulness. There was no blessing. There was just a righteousness from me that I deserved what I was getting because I had worked really hard for it. The trips were mine. The big house was mine. The money in the account was mine. All the luxury items I could buy were mine. And yet reading this passage, I could almost hear your heart breaking as you said, those things weren't yours, Janelle. You didn't earn them. I allowed you to have them. I fed you, I clothed you, I gave you the talents to earn money so that you could have those luxury items. And you made it all about you. You made it selfish, you made it self-focused. You were arrogant in your decisions of what you, what you were going to do with the things I gave you. I gave you those things, Janelle. And I know that now. And back then, I'm sure I did too, but I just didn't want to acknowledge it. I wanted the wealth. I wanted the glory. I wanted the acknowledgement. It was all about my ego and what I could obtain. God, I was so foolish. I acted in a way that is so undeserving of what you've now given me, which is a new heart. I have the same talents that I had before, but now I get to use them for your glory. You feed me, you clothe me. And what I have isn't because of me. It is all because of you. God, I worship you. I glorify you. I thank you. And it will never be enough for all of the arrogant, selfish behavior that has been part of my life. I know that I can never earn all that you've given me. And I can never thank you enough for the sacrifice of your son for all of those sins. And all my current sins and all my future sins. But somehow, just like Jose had for Gomer, this amazing, unselfish love, you have that same love for me. And just like you have that same love for Israel, you are our God of reconciliation. That you will always come and seek us and help guide us and love us unconditionally. I am undeserving of all of this, God. And I do pray from my heart that everything I have and everything I do and everything I think and everything I say is pleasing to you and more importantly glorifies you. My favorite verse, John 3.30, you must become greater, I must become less is the one thing that stuck with me as you were giving me my new heart. I had the world upside down. It was all about me. God, I'm so sorry for all the glory I tried to take away from you. For all the things I tried to make all about me. God, it is all about you and it's all about your sovereignty. I acknowledge that everything I have is because of you is yours and I will gladly give any of it up for anything that you want God thank you for this amazing love that you have and for being a God of reconciliation who always desires to have us back in your arms safe protected not exposed and that we will always commit ourselves to you 
as it says in Hosea, forever for righteousness and justice, steadfast love and tender compassion. Acknowledging always that you are our Lord, the reigning King of Kings, who is God over everything. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.